Hold on, folks. Just give me a few seconds to take care of something. Welcome everyone. We're gonna get started in just a sec. Um, SLP had to run to take care of something, but should be back in a couple of minutes. Welcome, happy Monday. Um, I know you can't unmute yourselves, but feel free to uh, chat in the chat or tell us how your Monday's going. Hello, hello. Okay, we're back, kind of. Okay, um, are we are we all here, Lolly? Great. Okay. Oh, it only took two minutes. All right. Welcome to Watch Me Work. But the me and the title is you. We're back today. We've been away doing some stuff, and um, we had Juneteenth, and then um, tomorrow uh, next week we have Fourth of July. So. Um, Okay. No, no, you have to go into another room. The joys of, of cohabitating with the child. So, um, but we know how to do watch me work, do we not? We know how to do watch me work. We are gonna work together for 20 minutes and then we're gonna talk with you about your creative process and your work. Um, and while we don't have time to actually read uh, or hear you, you know, uh, read from your work, we do have time to talk specifics about process okay so um if you have a question after our 20 minute work time lolly is going to tell you how to get in touch so we'll hit it lolly hi uh, yeah if you're in zoom with us uh you can ask questions by clicking on the raise your hand button which should be in the participants tab likely on the bottom of your screen if you have trouble finding it you can send me a private message in the chat and i will help you if you are watching with us on HowlRound, feel free to send us your questions via the public theater's twitter or instagram accounts or via Watch Me Work's Twitter account, which is at Watch Me Work SLP with the hashtag HowlRound. That's hashtag H O W L R O U N D. And that's how you ask questions. All right, all right. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna set my timer. Uh, we wanna first, of course, thank the Public Theater, thank HowlRound for helping us put this together. Um, especially now that we've been doing it on Zoom, we've been doing it on Zoom for, for years now. So this is very exciting, uh, but we're just very grateful. We're gonna set our timers. I got my little timer here. Lolly, you ready? And go. Great.
Okay, okay. There's 20 minutes. How are we doing? So quiet. All righty. Uh, Lolly, was that 20 minutes? Yep. Okay, great. All okay. good. Okay, if anybody has any questions, I am here. Mm -hmm. Oh, looks like we got a question. Hi. Hey, thank there. you. Um, so my question is um, the feedback I'm getting on the play that I'm working on right now consistently uh -huh. is that um, it's like not clear what my protagonist wants. Right. Um, but that's like kind of what I'm going for, but not in a way that makes people like not like the play. Like I, I don't, I don't want to be receiving that as like negative feedback. Right. And I've heard playwrights I admire talk about like being able to create characters who don't have objectives. Um, and so I feel like that is possible, but also I don't hear that talked about a lot. Like it feels like for many people, like what defines a good play is like something about someone having like clear wants and pursuing those things. Um, so I was wondering if you had any advice about like how to make a play work with a character or a protagonist who doesn't like know what they want. So your your your, your uh, player to admire who talk about plays where when characters don't have objectives or don't have clear wants. What are the names of those plays? Well, mm -hmm. I'm thinking of. So <laughs> I I don't know what plays they were talking about, but I was watching an interview with Claire Barron, and she was saying like, I don't know what I want in any given situation. Like, there's like probably ten percent of my life I could identify like this is what I wanted and this is why, this is what I was trying to do when I said this thing to that person, um, right. which like felt very true to me. And so I wanted to- yeah. I, guess, I think it is very true. Um, so I don't, I don't know Claire, you know, as a person, you know, as a person. So I, I, I'm not speaking for her or for them, but um, just as me as a person, um, that is true. Claire is completely right. Yeah, there's, there's, you know, there's many to most of the times in our lives, we say things and we don't know what we want. And while all the world's a stage, the process of making art is selecting, choosing, and, you know, uh, Picasso's Guernica isn't what it looked like if you were to take a picture. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, Hamlet, uh, if it, if those real events happened, probably didn't happen like that, right? So yeah. we're not um, creating real life because uh, to put on stage because that's what we're doing in real life. Right. So my just my just you know kind of pushback against comments like you know I have uh, people I know or students or whatever like they write something in their play or their novel or whatever and. And if the comment, if the overwhelming comments are, hey, it's not really working, you know, they go, well, it happened just like that in real life. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, so what? So what? Right. This isn't real life. It's a play. It's a novel. It's a song. It's a, it's a documentary, even, even reality shows. Right. So, I mean, and this isn't, did I, am I remembering correctly? Did you say more than one note that you're getting? was suggesting was leaning in that direction <laughs> yes okay okay so so yes i very much agree sometimes we do things and we don't know why we do them yes and that's life and even though life imitates art life is not art yeah and so when we construct a narrative it's constructed right so it it i think um it, it, it behooves us to like go, well, let us consider, you know, um, thinking about some of those rules for construction. Um, does, that, does that make sense? Yes. And this isn't to discount what happens in real life. Right. You okay. know, yeah, so I, I, think, I think what makes stories strong is, and again, because when you're in your real life, you're in your real life, right? We're in, uh, you're in your real life right now. 
you're not standing outside of your real life constructing something rewriting the end more than once figuring out what the what you know what the exciting incident might be figuring out if she's going to wear a green dress she didn't wear a green dress in real life who cares yeah you know what i'm saying so we have to embrace the the uh the the kind of rules of the road and it, to some extent i think i think so because it, it actually doesn't make uh in my opinion it, do, it doesn't make uh the narrative weaker it makes it stronger and more interesting yeah so she your character might not know what she wants but you might know what she wants yeah you see so you can do so you can have it that way she can be confused but you can know what she's going for yeah you know she can act um in opposite ways to what you even you know what she wants but you have an idea about what's going on um um and again if this were one note you got from an isolated person everybody else was like oh it's fantastic you know I would say then forget it, but at least consider an alternative and or, and or when you can find those five or three or eight or 27 awesome plays that fit into that paradigm, then go for it. Then you've got your answer right there. There they are. Right. You know what I mean? If you have like, yes, yes, look, you know, here's a play called blah, 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 and none of the characters know what they want and it's great and I love it. Great. There, there's your answer. Then go for it. Follow, follow, follow that. Right. You know. You. So yeah, it, it's uh. And what does your character want? Are you asking me that? Yeah. What's their name and what do they want? So maybe this is what is giving me a hard time. Is I'm like, I'm writing it about about a real life thing, and I don't totally understand for myself like where the play ends and real life begins but it's about my friend Leah um who at the beginning of the play wants to be a doctor and she goes to medical school and then like at the very beginning of the play she gets assaulted and then has all these questions about like what does care look like and how do we like heal trauma within a medical system um, so I'm also, it's also like a play about ideas. And so I think that's getting me like, like I'm, I'm trying to like illustrate ideas more than I'm. But no, but I mean, Emma, just because your character, I mean, I'm just talking about your character not your friend, right? Just because your character gets derailed doesn't mean you don't know what she wants to, you know, I mean, she wants to be a doctor. There you go. Right. And yeah. she's traveling. I mean, just as a character, she's going, you know, she's going to be a doctor. And then she gets assaulted. And then she has to question, what does care look like? So she wants to know what care looks like. Yeah. Okay. You see, it, it's not like, you know, it's, it's just a simple, she wants to know what care looks like. Yeah. And so she will, she will do her best to find the answers to that. And it might not look like what she thought it looked like in the beginning of the play. Maybe it looks like something else. Yeah. That makes sense to me. You know what I mean? Even, I mean, even, you know, you come on here to watch me work. Who knows what we want? Well, we want a variety of things. We want community. We want just maybe a sense of like, hey, I'm not the only one with that question. You know what I mean? We want, we want just to have 20 minutes to write that are unencumbered, you know? The want doesn't have to be like a, a big thing. Right. You know, you, you know, you, you want to, and I, I would, I wonder if the person who said they don't know what they want, dig a little bit. And actually most times people do know what they want. They just don't want to talk about it. I want right. to have a good day. <laughs> I want to have a good day. I want to be peaceful. I want to have a nice time. I want to walk down the street without someone yelling at me right i mean simple shit like that you know i want to feel i want to be treated equally i want to you know the things like that there's a there are a variety of of wants um so so i would just explore all the avenues explore 
being okay with having your character want something and going for it. And also finding specific works of literature in which the character doesn't know what they want and are just and and it's really compelling and exciting to you right so you can explore all the all the avenues you know cool thank you thank you good question thanks so much emma um matthew you're up next hey matthew hey how are you um good. happy to see you Happy to see you too. Thank you so much. Happy to be back. Um, have a question. I, I uh, had written a, a poetry collection. Now have a uh, video artwork that was inspired by the uh, poetry collection. Cool. Uh, in short, it's uh, it's basically shooting uh, ultimately around a hundred people who are in the future, who from time to time will be wandering into the room, getting a chance to look at through a window at us in the past. Mm -hmm. And you, you answered so much of, of my question in, in talking uh, about uh, want, that was wonderful. Each of those people comes in and they have something that they, they, they have a reason to walk in and want to, uh, to look at people in the past and maybe communicate something. Mm -hmm. um, that's really, really helpful. The other part of it is, um, given that there are maybe a hundred people, some might be in very briefly, how do I keep it? What, what kind of things can I do to keep it organic and to keep it fresh so that each of these people who's coming in to make connections with people in the past, that it's not starting to feel very repetitive or, um, or uninteresting or, un or inorganic to who these people seem like they might be. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's a, that's a big question. It sounds like a very beautiful project. Um, I, I wonder if you, if you, if it starts feeling repetitive, maybe you could cut, cut what's repetitive. You know, if it starts feeling repetitive, like, well, I've hit that note or that idea or that theme, you know, a couple of times already, do I need to hit it again? You know, um, you can, uh, you could trim it down. You know, there's that. Um, well, I'll be able to work with the actors too. Oh, so, that, oh, that's great. Okay, that. So you're gonna like workshop it? Is that is that a? Um, well, as part of the subtext, there there are different lines that will be visible to uh, to us, the viewers, that will be rolled out single lines every six seconds, roughly six or seven oh. seconds and they'll be uh showing something happening in our present right and then okay. the future is there and and ultimately uh it's for the the viewer to be able to juxtapose what they're seeing uh -huh. there versus what's happening in the future uh -huh. Uh -huh. um so that that will keep some momentum there it also will create some arcs in terms of what uh -huh. is happening uh in in the future as it were uh -huh. um but and and they don't need to be directly connected where you see something and if, uh, that you read a line um right, but just right, that right, it, right, right. if an actor is coming in uh and it, it's in effect creating 100 different scenes that each, each will feel potentially connected to other people in the room potentially mm -hmm. building on something that that came from somebody before uh -huh. but also somebody who's coming in with their own want uh -huh. um and and going in whatever direction they might uh they might uh -huh. Uh -huh. organically to want to go. Well, so so I, I just want to know where you are in the in the process of creating it. So you're you're going to have a workshop of it. You're going to involve be involved in actors. Um. Yeah. Well, there's a lot on the technical side. I'm I'm almost halfway through writing those uh, every six or seven second lines. Uh -huh. The sense of of that. Um. And then it's just a matter of uh, putting the word out and seeing if I can. Uh, uh, invite enough actors who are interested in, in showing up. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of this is uh, going to be put together in post-production. Everybody will be layered individually. So uh, there might be two or three people who, who can be playing against each other. It could be uh, portrayed as a family. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there could be relationships that are established between some people. Uh, there will be a number of individuals. Um, mm -hmm. Again, just a, a question 
if this were 20, I would think it would be fairly straightforward process, but given that it's a hundred, it could even be more people. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Well, it, I think, I think we're really going to have to just write it and see what you got then. Write it, see what you got. And you know what they say about film and, and TV and video it's, you know, it's created and post. So in the editing room, you're going to really, it, it's going to be created in the editing process. And you'll see if something, like I said, again, if something's repetitive, you can cut it. Do you like cutting or are you a? I, I'm pretty merciless if it's going to help the work. Yeah. Great. Then there you go. So you can cut, trim, add, you know, um, ADR, you know, add, you know, voices after the, the fact or whatever. Um, but I think it's going to be probably made in post. In and effect, an organic process on the, on the post side. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, that makes sense. It'll be, it'll be fun. It'll be fun, though. That sounds like a great project, man. Oh, thanks. I really appreciate thank it. You. Thanks yeah. for the advice. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Um, we have Lynn next. Hey, Lynn. Oh. Hey, Lynn. I think I, there you go. Hey, Did you girl. hey girl. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? Good, good. So I, I was writing a play and then somebody in, in our group here uh, a couple, some months ago said, uh, you made the suggestion or, or somebody had asked a question and you said, why don't you write the story of this play and then go back to the play? Somebody said that and it, it just struck me. I thought, oh, that's a really good idea. So um, I started just writing literally the story, uh, kind of the backstory of these, of these characters and stuff like that. Uh -huh. and, and, um, and then I saw a play. I saw <laughs> this play a friend of mine was in called The Orchard, which was a, a, a thing. And one of the actors who's, who I did a play with, uh, John McKinty is a deaf actor. Mm -hmm. And I found that he spoke to me more than any of the words did, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So, uh, and I just keep on thinking about those, that silence, which spoke so much, you know? And I wondered where the balance is I don't mean the balance of um, silence and words to tell the story, but how how not to write the silences in and write the silences in the words. Is that a, a crazy question? <laughs> Wait, who was it? Miles Davis. It's, it's not about the. No, it's just about the silence, something like yes, that. Yes, I remember not. I wrote that down a long time ago. Miles Davis said that, yes. Right. So, I mean, why? I, I don't understand. Why uh, don't you want to write in silences? You mean write actually in the script, going back to writing a play rather than you know, the, uh, the story of the play, uh, either, and either, uh, well, either, I mean, that's a, that's a double question. So whatever you're writing, whether it's the story of the play, which is, which means it's a story, I suppose, yes, a novel or a short story or a, sure. just to so, expand my understanding of all of the characters. Right. And then, so as you're writing the, the story of the play or a short story that you would then adapt into the play, right. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. you, you you really become aware of silence and the and the power of silence. Is that yes. correct? Yes. And so why don't you write in silence? I don't know. It's just silence. Composers write rests. Okay. I mean, aren't we composers? Yes. Here we are. You write rests, right? Rests, rests, quarter note rests, half note rests, whole rests, long rests. Sure. In orchestra, you know, my son now plays in the orchestra. It's like a page goes by. They're just counting in silence. You know, it's great. Wow. Just, you know, it, so can you just write in silences? Or is that weird? No, no, no. Uh, that, uh, that helps, you know, part of the answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Um, what about the other part? Uh, the I've been writing the story of these people mm -hmm. and their stories, you know, the underbelly kind of, we would call it the subtext, you know, whatever. But I've been writing that for so long to get, how do I get back into the play of these people? Stop writing the underbelly. Start writing. The <laughs> okay. Just stop. Go back to the play and just start writing the play. Okay. You know, unless you want it to be a short story, which is fine. It's an you know, awfully long short story then. Oh, well, then it's a novel. I don't know. But, well, you know, I mean, just stop. You know, how do you get back into it? Well, you get back into it, you know? Like, it's like if you had to, you know, I don't know what, anything. I mean, I sometimes when I'm, you know, I don't know what to do. I just, I just pretend that I'm somebody else trying to do something else, you know, like, like, how do I, you know, how, what do I do? I don't know. But how, if I were um, a person who really, really needed to get in shape, what would I do? You know, it's like that. And I go, well, I just put on my tennis shoes and go out for a walk. You know, sometimes it's that simple. Just, just go ahead and begin, you, you know, just begin or sure, begin sure, sure. again, you know, it, yes. you know it, it sounds, it sounds like, oh, it's too easy. And there must be, it must be more complicated than this. Yeah. In but my it experience, isn't. it's really not. It's not. And um, uh, I can't remember the quote, uh, but the thinking makes it so. That's a quote from somewhere. Um, well, it, it's so interesting because um, I saw a play of yours with a bowling alley. Um, mm -hmm. And I thought it sort of blew my mind. You can be anywhere and anything on the stage. And yeah. it was just such a wonderful thing, um, that that possibility, which I guess we, we uh, censor ourselves uh, because of whatever. And when I saw that, I thought it can be anywhere, just anywhere, anything, you know. Yeah, and it can, but you have to sit down and write it. Yes. Ah, you do. Yeah, you do, because it can't. It can. It can be. It can't be anywhere or anything if if one does not you or me or anybody does not actually put in the the you know well, time at the yeah at the at the typewriter or the notebook or the laptop or whatever, then it can be nothing. <laughs> Yeah, it has to have a context. I mean, I write every day, but it if it doesn't have a context, then there's no form to it. Well, if you're not telling some kind of a, yeah, the intent, what, the intent to make a, a thing? Yes, yes, yes. The yeah, intent, if, okay. yeah, if, yeah, if you don't have the intent to make a thing, then you have, then, yeah. I mean, intent is, is very important. It's not everything, but it's almost everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. It's always That's great talking with you, Lynn. Yeah. What did you say? It's great. It's always great talking with you. It's always great seeing and talking with you. I think Kat raised their hand, but then maybe unraised it. Are you interested in asking a question, Kat? Yes, please. <laughs> um, I raised it because I think everyone's finishing. Anyway. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, my question is, I'm writing, I'm, I'm writing in verse at the moment, some sections of the work in verse. And at the moment, I'm sort of following my nose on it. Um, I haven't quite articulated uh, in words, why or the function. And so I've started asking people sort of survey, survey style, like what do you think the function or value or place positionality that verse have in contemporary <laughs> plays and performances? Um, I've asked quite a few people and I'd love to hear 
what you think. Verse like poetry? Yeah, um, so metered. Um I mean there are sung through musicals, are there not? Are there still? People are still writing sung through musicals, right? Which is a form of metered verse. It's just set to music, correct? Um, it, 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 so your question, yeah, there's a lot of thinking going on these days. Um, are you enjoying it? Are you enjoying writing in verse? Is it fun? Are you have, unmute yourself, Kat. Are you, is it enjoyable? Um, yes, I mean, difficult. Yes, sure, sure, it's difficult, like everything, right? Mm -hmm. It's difficult. Some days it's joyful, some days it sucks. Some days it's, it's, it's tra-la-la, some days it's OMG. You know, who, who knows, right? It's, it's all of those things. But if it's enjoyable to you, then it's worth it. You know, um, uh, sure, we can see like, oh, gee, are people writing plays and verse these days? Well, sure. People are writing, still writing musicals. I think as long as people write, you know, poetry is very much alive these days. Um, slam poets and and mm. all those things yeah if it's enjoyable to you then i think you should continue and even if five people said don't because verse plays aren't in these days who the fuck are they you know what i'm saying yeah if you're if you're enjoying it is that your question i'm i'm not sure of, of your question i'm just i'm like um, was moving on like the rhetorical and structural placement of verse, like as openers and interludes and sort of, you know, like in a musical, my understanding is, is that the song comes when simply words are not enough, that it, that it becomes in, into a new realm where the, the song, mm -hmm. but I don't know if that, if that is true of spoken verse every time. I'm kind of pondering that. It's like, 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 why are they like? If you could imagine a question, like, why are they speaking in verse here? Mm -hmm. uh, are you? Do you want to give yourself permission to write in verse? I'm just I'm like. Right in verse. It's okay. I mean, you know, I mean, musicals, they sing when they, when they, when they can't speak or they sing when word, plain words aren't enough or they sing when they feel like it. Mm -hmm. Or they sing when they have a song in their heart or they sing when, when, oh, it's a fun moment. Because if you think of like Shakespeare, I mean, gee, there are so many great, well, that's in verse though. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, <laughs> now is the winner of our discontent. I mean, he could have said it, or they could have said it in prose, but they said it in verse, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I would, you said you're following your nose. What does your nose not know? Why have you stopped? Following your nose. No, oh, I, I haven't. I just, it's a, it's a vignette style work. So I'm like, where does it go? And what brings up to it? And what makes shifts? And where does it like sit within the work? Uh huh. It, it sounds like you're, you're writing something very beautiful. And I would just keep telling yourself the story of it. You know, the story is the, is the, is the yarn literally that will help you navigate the maze in which the Minotaur sits, like with Ariadne, you yeah. know, and the Minotaur and the yarn is the thing that's going to help you navigate the maze. Um, but uh, yeah, I can't name any, any like contemporary verse plays off the top of my head, but I can think of a lot of great musicals that are totally sung through. Mm -hmm. Those to me are, are like verse plays. Even if you saw, um, Recently, I think it was all sung through. The Hang, Taylor Mac, it was all sung through. I, I didn't 
buy the book and open it and see if it was in fact in verse. I don't know, but it was sung through. So it, I imagine that it had, I mean, it had very great meter and rhythm and time and all that. Um, so yeah, and I didn't stop to think once, gee, why are they singing right here? <laughs> because it was just that beautiful. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks for the question. Thank you. Thank you, Kat. We have time for one more question. So I'm going to unmute you. Is it Crystal? It's Crystal. Hey, Crystal. Hey. Hi. Hi. Great to see you. Great to see you too. Always great to see you. Um, okay, so I'm in, um, working on two things. Um, um, well, okay. I have a short film that I'm like right now, like trying to raise money for to try to shoot this year, and 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 um, uh, and I'm working on writing the therapist, the one I told you about, the the one with the crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. um, with the short film, I uh, I want to I want to write it a, a feature version of it, um, but I I don't have experience in writing a feature from a short film because when i wrote it i the initial idea was that it would stay a short, it, it would stay a short film because it was comp it, it was enough story or enough of uh like the imagination could only go so far that it could mm -hmm. fit 15 minutes and be satisfactory and still be passionate about it mm -hmm. and now it's like okay like how do i i guess elongate it because i can usually chop down or or trim the fat off of stories well i mean not well not not willingly but i do it when i have to mm -hmm. but to elongate that's that seems like a, a brand new challenge that i haven't had to deal with um with any of my stories um so i guess my question is like how do i even like start when i was already satisfied with 15 minutes because i kind of felt like that's all i had in me but i i need i do need to make it a um a, a feature length um or full length um well, can you use another topic or you have to i mean you're satisfied you're pleased with what you have and yet you have to make it a feature length but i don't understand why you can't just choose another topic another topic like another story yeah uh because this the the goal in mind with this was okay um that this would be um what i forget what it's called as not a spectacle um i can't remember the term but basically something to introduce me into the world of film as like right okay. after. Cool. and For so sure it would be something that would be something that I could say, okay, well, if you want to see more, this, I see, I see, I see. you know, okay. so I wanted to kind of have something okay. running. So you really like to work with those characters in that situation and that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So usually with a, a 15 or 20 minute film, you're just dealing with the, the core thing that happens, right? Right. Okay. If you think of, let's say, you know, like uh, Hamlet, right? The uh -huh. thing that happens, you know, he realizes he comes home, realizes his dad, the short version, like take Hamlet, right? Okay, uh -huh. take something you know, like Hamlet. <laughs> Sorry, but it's on my mind. Um, so the short version would be he comes home, he realizes his uncle killed his dad, he gets really mad, he kills his uncle. Right? Oh, oh. that's 15 minute film, right? Right now, realize now. Let's look at it in its, its five act version, right? Okay. He comes home. They've seen a ghost. He doesn't believe them. Then he goes. Oh my gosh! It's his dad. Swear, swear. You, you know, see, you know. So we add late. So we blow it up. I know Lynn's laughing. <laughs> but so what you can do actually as an exercise. I'm just making this up. So I don't know if it's going to work okay. or not, but it could work. Take some 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 movies right because you, you can just sit there and like watch a movie right take okay. a couple of take three movies that you love okay watch them 
Okay, three movies, you gotta love them. They gotta be, and maybe they're kind of like the same kind of genre-ish thing, or maybe not. No, maybe one's a rom-com, one's a thriller, and one's a, I don't know, action adventure. Okay? okay, okay. And take them, watch them, enjoy them, and write off the short version of the plot. Like, bim, bam, boom, the 15 minute version. If I could do this in 15 minutes, what would it be? And then write out the long version and watch how it, they're like, expanded on uh, ah i'm just making it up right now i don't know it sounds like it'll work it okay. could. yeah matthew's nodding and said yes oh these people are nodding their heads ha ha success <laughs> yes okay that could be really fun and plus you get to watch movies added bonus you make some popcorn get the kids involved the hubby you know y'all are chilling watching netflix what could be better while you're working secretly, <laughs> world <laughs> domination is happening. Right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then you see, oh, look, the, you know, with Hamlet, just short, they introduce a girlfriend. And the girlfriend brother has a brother. And the brother and the girlfriend, yeah, they, they have a dad who talks a lot, right? So suddenly mm -hmm. you have Laertes, Ophelia, and Polonius. And that's a whole shit storm in itself yeah and then you know horatio he's got his shit and then you know fort and brass is like looming you know all these people okay you yeah see what i'm saying yeah okay 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 well, that sounds like so much fun i might do it tonight myself just for the fun of it. <laughs> okay look it's 601 oh it is <laughs> yeah thank you okay. Woo. Thank you. you guys are great the next week is the fourth of july but we'll be back the following week yeah right okay Okay, thank well, feel independent, you. as independent as you can. Uh -huh.